Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2024. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Leviticus 14 and Matthew 26, 51 through 75. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your Word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Cleansing from a defiling skin disease. Leviticus 14. The Lord said to Moses, These are the regulations for any diseased person at the time of their ceremonial cleansing. When they are brought to the priest, the priest is to go outside the camp and examine them. If they have been healed of their defiling skin disease, the priest shall order the two live clean birds and some cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop be brought for the person to be cleansed. Then the priest shall order that one of the birds be killed over the fresh water in a clay pot. He is then to take the bird and dip it together with the cedar wood, the scarlet yarn, and the hyssop into the blood of the bird that was killed over the fresh water. Seven times he shall sprinkle the one to be cleansed of the defiling disease, and then pronounce them clean. After that, he is to release the live bird in the open fields. The person to be cleansed must wash their clothes, shave off their hair, and bathe with water. Then they will be ceremonially clean. After this, they may come into the camp, but they must stay outside their tent for seven days. On the seventh day, they must shave off their hair. They must shave their head, their beards, their eyebrows, and the rest of their hair. They must wash their clothes and bathe themselves with water, and they will be clean. On the eighth day, they must bring two male lambs and one ewe lamb, a year old, each without defect, along with three tenths of an ephel of the finest flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering and one log of oil. The priest who pronounces them clean shall present both the one to be cleansed and their offerings before the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meaning. Then the priest is to take one of the male lambs and offer it as a guilt offering along with the log of oil. He shall wave them both before the Lord as a wave offering. He is to slaughter the lamb in the sanctuary area where the sin offerings and the burnt offerings are slaughtered. Like the sin offering, the guilt offering belongs to the priest. It is most holy. The priest is to take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed. On the thumb of their right hand and on their big toe of their right foot. The priest shall then take some of the log of oil, pour it in the palm of his own left hand, dip his right fingers into the oil in his palm, and with his fingers sprinkle some of it before the Lord seven times. The priest is to put some of the oil remaining in his palm on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, on the thumb of their right hand, and on the big toe of their right foot, on top of the blood of the guilt offering. The rest of the oil in his palm the priest shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed and make atonement for them before the Lord. Then the priest is to sacrifice the sin offering and make atonement for the one to be cleansed from their uncleansedness. After that, the priest shall slaughter the burnt offering and offer it on the altar together with the grain offering, 
and make atonement for them, and they will be clean. If, however, they are poor and cannot afford these, they must take one male lamb as a guilt offering to be waived to make atonement for them, together with a tenth of an evil of the finest flour mixed with olive oil for a grain offering, a log of oil, and two doves, or two young pigeons, such as they can afford, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. On the eighth day they must bring them for their cleansing to the priest at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. The priest is to take the lamb for the guilt offering together with the log of oil and wave them before the Lord as a wave offering. He shall slaughter the lamb for the guilt offering and take some of its blood and put it on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed on the thumb of their right hand and on their big toe of their right foot. The priest is to pour some of the oil into the palm of his hands and with his right fingers sprinkle some of the oil from his palm seven times before the Lord. Some of the oil is to, in his palm he is to put on the same place as he put the blood for the guilt offering on the lobe of the right ear, on the one to be cleansed, on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of their right foot. The rest of the oil in his palm, the priest shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed, to make atonement for them before the Lord. Then he is to sacrifice the doves or the young pigeons, such as the person can afford one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. Together with the grain offering in this way, the priest will make atonement for the, before the Lord on behalf of the one he be, to be cleansed. These are the regulations for anyone who has made a filing skin disease and who cannot afford the regular offerings for their cleansing. Cleansing from Defiling Molds The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, When you enter the land of Canaan, which I am giving to you as your possession, and I put a spreading mold in a house in that land, the owner of the house must go to tell the priest, I have seen something that looks like a defiling mold in my house. The priest is to order the house to be emptied before he goes to in to examine the mold, so that nothing in the house will be pronounced unclean. After this, the priest is to go in and inspect the house. He is to examine the mold on the walls, and if it has greenish or reddish depressions that appear to be deeper than the surface of the wall, the priest shall go out of the doorway of the house and close it up for seven days. On the seventh day, the priest shall return to inspect the house. If the mold has spread on the walls, he is to order that the contaminated stones be torn out and thrown into an unclean place outside of town. He must weigh have all the inside walls of the house scraped, and the material is, that is scraped off dumped into an unclean place outside the town. And then they are to take other stones to replace these, and take new clay and plaster the house. If the defiling mold reappears in the house after the stones have been torn out and the house scraped and plastered, the priest is to go and examine it. And if the mold has spread into the house, it is a, as a, it is a per persistent defiling mold. The house is unclean, and it must be torn down. Its stones, timbers, 
and all the plaster and then taken out of the town to an unclean place. Anyone who goes into the house while it is clean, closed up will be unclean till evening. Anyone who sleeps or eats in the house must wash their clothes. But if the priest comes to examine it and the mold has not spread after the house has been plastered, he shall pronounce the house clean because the devouring mold is gone. To purify the house he is to take two birds and some cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hazel. He shall kill the one bird over fresh water in a clay pot, and then he is to take the cedar wood, the hazel, and the scarlet yarn, and the live bird, dip them into the blood of the dead bird in the fresh water, and sprinkle the house seven times. He shall purify the house with the bird's blood, the fresh water, the live bird, the flint cedar wood, the hayshop, and the scarlet yarn. Then he is to release the live bird in the open fields outside the town. In this way he will make atonement for the house, and it will be clean. These are the regulations for defiling skin diseases for a sore for defiling molds in fabric or in a house, and for a swelling, a rash, or a shiny spot, to determine when something is clean or unclean. These are the regulations for defiling skin diseases and defiling molds. That was Leviticus 14, and now we will be turning to Matthew 26, 51. Matthew twenty six fifty one. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached him for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant on the right on of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot not call on my father, and he will once, at once, put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? In that hour Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have to come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. And then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Jesus before the Sanhedrin. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Scipius, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priests. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two, two came forward and declared, This fellow said, I am, am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is the testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under order the oath by the living God. Tell us if they, or if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. 
you have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to you, all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. Why do you, what do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. And then they spit in his face, and they struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Peter disowns Jesus. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus on Galilee, and she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you are talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him, and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again, with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, the, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. And that was Matthew twenty-six fifty-one through 75, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2024 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Leviticus 15 through 16 and Matthew 27, 1 through 26. Father, I just thank you for your word. For without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. And so I give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. I'd like to thank you folks for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2024 for today. I, Senator Briscoe, have enjoyed being the messenger of the word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So come back and see us again tomorrow because, well, God willing, we'll be here. And we hope that you will, too. Have a blessed day. Please like and share.